Okay, so Ohmtec has just come out with what will probably be one of their most popular lasers, and that is their brand new desktop machine, the Polar. So this year, especially, there's so many of these high-powered desktop CO2 machines. It really feels like we're in a multiverse of options. But before we talk about all this competition, let's do this one more time. So this is the Ohmtec Polar, a 50 watt desktop CO2 laser. It can fit material up to 20.1 inches wide and 11.8 inches deep. You've got a camera, air assist, internal water reservoir, external fan assist, plus an included rotary. And it's got these really cool blue LED lights. I just have it turned off because it's pretty loud. For software, it supports free options like RDWorks or my favorite, Lightburn. It's got an all metal and glass construction. Just don't try to pick it up yourself. It's not a good idea. And just like Spider-Man, there's only one desktop laser that is like this, and you're looking at it. Well, not exactly. You've got machines like the higher price Glowforge. You have the Gwek Cloud, which is actually super similar to this machine. As well as at this price point, I actually wanted to talk about this guy right here, which is a more industrial style 60 watt CO2 machine that comes in at about the same price as the Polar. So what we're gonna do is see how this machine stacks up to the competition with these categories. So first off, and probably the most important is price. So the Ohmtec Polar, as well as the 60 watt unit, both come in at about 2,900 bucks. Currently, the Gweek Cloud, or I just call it the G Machine because I have no idea how to pronounce that, is $28.50. And really, the only big difference with this machine in terms of price is going to be Glowforge. Their low-end machine starts right at $4,000. And really, if you're going to compare the Glowforge to this machine, you're going to want to go all the way to the top end, which brings you in at $7,000. Moving over to power, both the G Machine and the Polar are at 50 watts. And then you've got this guy at 60 watts. They actually have a whole line of these, so you can even drop this down down to 50 watts, you're gonna get a smaller machine, but it's also going to be cheaper. And then moving over to Glowforge, it's going to be either 40 or 40 watts, depending on what you are looking at. So in terms of performance, there's really going to be two different things that are going to limit you. First is power, second is speed. And on the speed side of things, again, they are pretty similar. On the polar side of things, they list both 500 as well as 600 meters per second, which is the same as the G machine. And then with this guy, it is coming in at 400 meters per second. But again, they have higher, more spectacular machines that can go faster. Now, when you compare that to Glowforge, it's actually kind of hard because they don't give you real values. When I did review the G machine specifically against the Glowforge, I did this time test and the Polar machine is going to stack up pretty much the exact same way. So kind of what I was finding is that the overall speed might be about the same. It's really the acceleration that's going to change between the Polar machine and the Glowforge. Now, definitely the biggest difference between this machine and any of the other desktop CO2 machines is going to be the work area as well as like the overall machine size. This guy is actually sitting all the way on the ground on, a lot of times it winds up getting used as a table versus Polar, which is designed to sit on a work table or a desk. Now with that, you're also gonna get some differences in the actual workable area. So how big of the material that you can get in there. For Polar and the G Machine, they are exactly the same. So 21.1 by 11.8 inches. Glowforge is slightly smaller than that. But when you jump over to the 60 watt machine, you're looking at 28 by 20 inches. And honestly, the biggest difference is how far you can drop the work bed, meaning how thick of the the material that you can get inside it. So I've engraved entire pumpkins in machines that are like this, but on the polar side of things, you can get a little bit extra depth. This whole tray right here will pull out and you can remove the honeycomb bed that's underneath. And you would especially use that when you're actually attaching the rotary to the machine. So with that increased work area for the 60 watt machine, the overall machine size is also much, much bigger. The other desktop machines are pretty much in the same category with Polar and the G machine being slightly deeper than Glowforge. So while the overall work area and machine size sets this apart from the other machines, it's software where we see the main differences between all these machines and then Glowforge. Because with Glowforge, you have to use their cloud-based software. You can't run anything local. So you basically need to have Wi-Fi in your shop. Now, a super limited version of the software is free. If you pretty much want to do anything with it other than just upload a design and run it, you're going to have to pay 50 bucks a month. Now that's compared to the rest of the machines, including Polar, which come with RDWorks, or you can use my favorite piece of software, and that is Lightburn. Yay. So any of the Ohmtec machines now support Lightburn, even going all the way down to their 40 watt units, which is a smaller version of this. And then the G machine is the exact same. Now I'm kind of lumping ease of use into the software side of things, because that really is where you're going to interface the most with your machine. If you're super new to lasers, and maybe you're not super handy, Glowforge is always what I wind up recommending to people just because it is really 
easy. I actually just donated my Glow Forge to the local elementary school just because I knew it was going to be the best fit for them because it's easy to use, and it's super safe. But that also comes with a lot of constraints. Now that's not saying any of these other machines, including the Polar, is hard. There's just going to be a little bit of a learning curve. And speaking of learning curve, this will be a good time to mention that I actually have a full course that breaks down not only how to use Lightburn, but how to set up one of these machines with it. Now I'm actually in the process of finishing that up right now. I'm recording recording polar specific videos. So like how to focus, different tips on how you can get alignment, but you can also get a version of the course that is specifically just Lightburn. So especially if you have a diode machine, it's gonna walk you through how to use Lightburn and how to get up and running with it. There's a link down below to both of the courses and I encourage you guys to check it out. Now, next up, let's talk about the company. This is where Ohm Tech and the Week Cloud really start to separate. Now, the best that I can tell, I'm pretty sure these machines are basically coming from the same factory. I actually have both of them in the shop. I just didn't have room to put them side by side. And as you walk through the design and the different features, I mean, they're basically identical. So the really standout difference between the two is the company that it's coming from. Now, Gweek is great. I've definitely had a bunch of people purchase and they seem to enjoy their machines. But Ohm Tech I've really liked because they actually have US-based support. So they actually have offices in California and they do a really good job of offering support, specifically phone support. So you might be doing a big production run for the holiday season. You're gonna run into a snag and you really need to get something solved quickly, being able to contact somebody a little closer to home, whether you're in the United States or a native English speaker, if you're over in Europe is great. So in the final category, we're gonna talk about extras. First cameras, all the machines have them except for the 60 watt unit. The higher price machines, I do believe have an integrated camera, but I actually find for the most part, I really don't use the camera feature a ton because I use the tracing feature with the actual laser itself, but the camera definitely has its benefits and the Polar, Gweek, and Glowforge all include those. The next extra has to do with how these machines actually focus. So the Polar and G machine both have motorized Z axis, but they don't actually autofocus in that it can actually detect what the distance is between the laser head and the material and then auto adjust. That is something that Glowforge does. It actually has an additional camera in the laser head and they might be cheating it a little bit by actually having a little QR code on their material so it can read it and then know the material thickness. But once you get Polar initially set up, all you have to do is measure the thickness of your material and make sure you enter that in and then it's automatically going to adjust the laser head as a result. The only time I've seen an actual autofocus head come in handy is when you're working with material that just isn't the same thickness. So when I've done like rock engraves, especially with the full spectrum used, you could actually see the laser coming up and down in relation to where the material was. And so that was pretty handy. Now this machine is the manual version, meaning that there is a knob that you actually twist that drops the bed up and down. So that is how you focus the laser. They do have more expensive machines that have a motorized Z axis. And then last up on the extras, and really this is only a key difference between the bigger machine and then all the other desktop units, in that the desktop units have their cooling and their compressor all integrated within one system. So literally you just take this out of the box, you've got an exhaust tube that you hook up so you don't get smoke and whatever you're working with, and that's it. Versus these bigger machines are going to have a separate cooling reservoir and sometimes that's as simple as having an actual bucket and a fish pump inside of it versus actually having a reservoir that is also an industrial chiller. So it's got the pump and they can keep the water cold and then it cycles it through your machine. Now, if I was going to pick between any of these machines, as with all things, it really depends. If you need the bigger size and the bigger work area, then something like this might be a better option. But if you're specifically looking at the Polar or the Ohm Tech, I definitely would lean more on the Ohm Tech side just because I'm more familiar with the company and the support is great. Now you're probably saying, yeah, you would say that because Ohm Tech is probably paying you commission, which is true. The link down below is an affiliate link, but all of the links down below are affiliate links. So I get a kickback on any of the machines if you do decide to pick one of these up. So hopefully that's not going to bias my opinion. And if you're checking out any of these machines, that's a great way to support this channel. But the other way this free content is supported is through sponsors. This brings me back to this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one solution for your website or domain online. Way back in the day, I tried to use a bunch of different website builders, but the end product just didn't look good. There's always updates, things always broke. But when I switched to Squarespace, I really didn't have any of those issues. And when I first started, it was more of a blog-based content website. I was doing stuff about children's books at the time. And then an early version of my current website was straight through Squarespace. It was great because I could link YouTube videos. I could write articles. I even hosted my podcast directly through it. 
but eventually I started to want to sell products myself. And that is where the e-commerce side of Squarespace definitely comes in. So if you're setting up a website to sell things that you make with any of these lasers, I encourage you guys to check Squarespace out. And if you use my link down below, you'll get a discount on a domain and or plan. Okay, so let's get back into it. All right, so that was the CO2 comparison, but you might be looking at the Ohmtech Polar versus a diode machine. Specifically, let's talk about the Xtool D1 Pro, which is over $1,000. And so the price difference is going to be 2,000 bucks. So for me, the best way to look at it is what are you getting for that extra $2,000? First, you're going from 20 watts on the Xtool D1 Pro all the way up to 60 watts. And with more power, you're going to be able to pair that with more speed. So you're going to be able to produce products a lot faster faster and you're going to be able to cut a lot deeper when you move to a machine like Polar. But also with great power comes great responsibilities, specifically safety. And that really is where the CO2 machines stand out. They're fully enclosed. Typically the lid will have some sensor. So as soon as that lid opens, it cuts the laser beam. The beam itself is invisible. So dive machines, you always have to protect your eyes from the light itself, not just protecting yourself from actually touching the laser beam. And because they're fully enclosed, they're also going to have integrated exhaust. So you actually have tubing that you can direct through a filter or out a window. On the diode side, you really don't have any of that. So you constantly have to be thinking thinking about how am I going to protect my eyes, how am I going to protect my lungs, and how am I going to protect this machine from other people that might not know how dangerous it is. So with the Polar, the 2000 bucks gets you more power, more speed, and more responsibility or safety. So you've decided to pick up one of these machines. Maybe your next question is, what am I going to make? Specifically, what am I going to make that could actually make me money? I've done a full video on that on my top money making recommendations. We're going to jump into that right now. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys. Thank you.